thrilled to welcome Scott D. Pomfret to the podcast. Scott is the author of four books that have come out this year. The Second Half, A Gay American Football Story, The Hunger Man, Only Say the Word, and a collection of short stories called You Are the One. His past published works include Since My Last Confession, A Gay Catholic Memoir, The Romantics Brand of Gay Romance Novels, and The Q Guide to Wine and Cocktails. Scott considers himself lucky to be able to write from his tiny Boston apartment and even tinier Provincetown Beach Shack, which he shares with his partner of 15 years, Scott Whittier. So, welcome, Scott, to the podcast. Thank you. Glad to be here. I appreciate you guys having me on. And I have to say that I'm a little jealous of your Provincetown Beach Shack. That sounds awesome. <laughs> it is. This, it certainly is this time of year, and my partner, Scott, is actually down there the whole summer, so I'm jealous as well, if that makes you feel better. <laughs> So tell us about your recent work, which is the one that I've read, uh, the second half, and the inspiration behind it. Sure. So the second half is a, uh, you know, the subtitle is a, a gay American football story. It is a romance um, between a young college coach and his uh, slightly older uh, quarterback, who has, is a military guy and served in the wars a, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And the story tells about the, the difficulty the college coach has expressing his feelings. Indeed, it takes him two years to actually actually make an approach to the, to the football star. Uh, but once they do dive in, uh, it's with both feet. But it's not a traditional romance. So this is, above all, a football story. Uh, you know, it is a sports book. Uh, it is also, it, at times, a war story um, because the quarterback, you know, recalls some of the times he served and how they affected him. And lastly, these are flawed characters. These are these are not, you know, knights in shining armor by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you know, it, they they have fits and starts um, before they have any chance of getting to happiness. Yeah, that was one of the things I liked about the book so much is that there's really a lot going on here. You've got that standard romantic element and the push and pull between these guys trying to get together. Uh, and the, one of the things I liked about it as a sports book is when it takes the the coach and the athlete, you've brought them much closer together in age because uh, the coach is the youngest of his type of coach in the league. And then the football star is older because of his military time. That's right. So it's not it's not kind of a, a daddy son role play sort of thing. It's not a traditional coach uh, element. You know, they are they are in some ways peers. Both of them uh, happen to be quarterbacks. Uh, they both happen to be very talented. The 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 coach actually sort of perhaps more talented and sort of flubbed his talent. Was not able to try and make it the next step to the to the pros. And the the uh, and Brady, the the soldier turned uh, football star, is much more of a scrappy, you know, not necessarily a native talent uh, on the field. Somebody who fights to get get where he wants to be. So in that way, the the, the two are are different, but they are also somewhat alike. What was your inspiration behind pulling all this together into the book? So. I, I wanted to, and this is sort of captured in the subtitle of the story, A Gay American Football Story, I wanted to make gay as American as football, as mom, as apple pie, you know, and obviously this was way before or Orlando, but in a post-Orlando world, post-Pulse world, you know, I think that's a particularly important statement to make. I'm glad I made it. Um, and so I'm weaving in some elements that, that I, I think people think of as, you know, very American, you know, the, the sort of military piece of it, the sports piece of it. And uh, above all, these two guys are, are not only trying to you know, get together with, you know, their second half, so to speak, you know, the, the, their, their better half, um, but they are also trying to live up to the best conception of themselves. So there's, there's a lot in here about honor, not necessarily military honor, but about honor and truthfulness and being true to, your, to yourself and, and to the people that you interact with. I like how much you've not only have layered in the book, but in the title as well, because um, it, it works as just the title, obviously, but now you now that you've told me all that too, it's like wow, there's a lot going on in just the title, which is yeah, and I think I think the second half also. I mean, obviously, 
second half of a football game, but but the second half meaning a second chance, you know, that, that was another thing that I I just wanted to to, to sort of pull together in a, in three simple words. So I have to ask, which came first, the title or the or the story? Because it seems like it could have gone either way there. So, so you mentioned that back back in the day, uh, my partner and I used to write the romantics romance novels, and we we had we we published seven of them. We had uh, a few that were sort of sitting in outline format. This was one of those untitled, and I brushed it off. Um, now, now, probably three years ago, brushed it off, and uh, the the title I will admit came very, very early on, uh, and I was like, "Oh, that's perfect! Uh, let's go for it." Um, it kind of helped me, con- you know, finish the book uh, ultimately. Mm-hmm. And and certainly, even in this you know post Michael Sam era, it's certainly it's it's a timely book now as we get more athletes coming out too. Absolutely, and and you know I I, I mentioned Michael Sam uh, and a few other folks in the uh, dedication to the book, but I'm, but I'm also sort of appealing to the the, the much less uh, high profile people, so the people who who are who are athletes who are coming out in high school, who are coming out in college, and you've seen those stories, and they've only prolifer- proliferated after uh, after the Pulse situation. Um, you, you see more and more of those stories, and I, again, I think that's important uh, of, of the Americanizing of gay, not necessarily normalizing. You know, I, I, I think in some way we sort of still think of ourselves as, as uh, in some way exceptional, certainly different, um, but at the same time, that di- making that difference part of the uh, American story, and in particular for the American athlete. <laughs> Now, as I as I mentioned in the intro, you've had a very prolific year with now you know four books coming out. Uh, tell us about those other three because I haven't had sure. A chance to I read mean, those appear- yet. appearances uh, can be deceiving because these actually these three were actually written over the course of time. So, uh, only say the word is a. Uh, is it a, a, sort of a, uh, a also an unusual romance? It is about a. Uh, old, this time an older, younger couple, uh, the younger of whom is involved in the Catholic Church during the time that, that the church was in opposition to same-sex marriage in Massachusetts. Not that they aren't now, but, but now they're a lot quieter about it. Uh, and they um, eventually the, 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 the pitch of religious fervor around uh, same-sex marriage ends up with, the, uh, with a shooting at the church that, that involves the, the younger partner of the two. And it's about the fallout from that. Um, you know, it, it, there is a, spirit, a, a major league spiritual element to it. I actually started writing it before I wrote the memoir you referenced since my last confession, put it aside, and then brought it out again um, last year and started working again on the, on the more fictional um, spiritual, a uh, little bit more, you know, magic realism for any, for, for lack of a better word, built into it. Um, the short story similarly uh, span over the years, so I think there's one that goes back as far as it was published back in 2001, um, and come right up to to uh, about six months before publication date. And they are eclectic, uh, but there are there is a theme. Uh, there's a military theme for one. Uh, many of them set in the Don't Ask, Don't Tell era. And there is a sort of a, a mini theme of second person narration. So, so about a third of them are are narrated in the second person, sort of the the, the you uh, uh, throughout. Uh, and the last book I I, I, met, I posted this on Facebook the other day and, and got some grief for it. But the last book is is actually my favorite. It is uh, the Hunger Man, and it is a historical novel with a a central gay character uh, who happens to have been kidnapped by the Irish fairies when he was when he was young. But it 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 deals with the uh, famine that. Uh, that afflicted Ireland in the 1840s and in the early 1850s that caused the massive Irish uh, diaspora uh, that populated America, Australia, you know, you name it, all over the world. And it, this one is very much what I call fairy realism because it is based on Irish fairy tales, Irish myth sort of woven into the structure uh, of the history of that time, although I've been sort of loosey-goosey with the actual historical timeline, of course, to make it fit the story. But um, 
you know that that is that is my my, my actual favorite. I'm I'm Irish by background. My mother uh, was was born there. My my entire extended family is there. So this is this is the one for them. That that crosses a lot of genre. It does. I, I keep. I just mentioned to somebody the other day that I, I. I think I have to keep rebuilding an audience for every single book I put out because they're all sort of very different from one another, um, and and you know there's there's always a bit of a backbone of of romance in in each of them somewhere along the line, but uh, they, you know they tend to be these a traditional romances. Having having written more traditional ones with my partner, they tend to be these. You know, super flawed characters, uh, not necessarily happy ever a- happily ever after um, things. So uh, I, I I write what what captures my fancy, and I you know I, I could probably be more strategic about it, but ultimately you only have so many books inside you and only so much time. And, and let's talk about the time a little bit. So you had a big gap from about 2012 to now, from what I see in my research. Were you just writing on all of these, and they happen to come out now? So I was writing throughout that time. I was writing short stories, and I continue to write short stories. I was publishing under a a, a, a different name, so that my Im- current employer would feel more comfortable a- about life in general. Um, they have since uh, come around, and hence you have this flurry of books all of a sudden coming out right now. Uh, and um, you know, it, it's kind of a backlog in many ways. Uh, and, I, and I do continue to publish the short stories in literary journals uh, throughout this time frame. That's cool. That's cool. I'm glad to know it didn't just stop completely. Um, I'm intrigued that you went second person, and I, I, I'm going to have to pick up that book because second person is often considered, you know, really a ballsy choice to make because it's not used that often. That's right. I think some people have difficulty uh, because it's, A, it can be accusatory in many ways, and, and many of my stories you know, are, are, are pointing the finger at, 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 at the recipient, and in this case, that is the reader. Um, and I think people find it um, hard to, to live in, inside the story in that way, um, and they... they they struggle with it. I've always loved it because it's so good for voice. You know, if you can if you can keep a consistent voice throughout, it can be magical. Not well done, obviously. It 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 breaks down, and then it starts to sort of feel like a gimmick instead of instead of a legitimate you know narrative technique. Um, you know, I, I I obviously also write in in first and uh, third, but but that is one of my favorites because I just find find it has some sort of a inability to have a hard staccato sort of rhythm to it you know you 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 um that i that i really enjoy but but it's certainly not for every story and it's definitely so i hear not for every reader just one more question on that how do you decide what makes that kind of story that you're like this one needs to be second is there a particular something to it that sticks out for you uh, it, it's often driven by some sort of passion, um, not infrequently anger. Um, but 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 you know, there's a, a story, and you are the one that 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 is a love story. It is a title story. You are the one, um, and um, but it but it's a it's a passionate, uh, frustrated, um, you know, again, occasionally angry voice that seems to work really well in the second person in a way that in the first person maybe it would get. It, it would get lost um, and be a, be a little more uh, discursive in a way that that gets rid of that staccato sort of rhythm that that I really wanted to have in the, in that sort of story. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to have a fanboy moment now. <laughs> so romantics, yay! <laughs> and we do have the other two too, but they don't, they're not the same size, so I couldn't hold them all up. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Wonderful to see them again. Uh, these five seem out of print. So, so the um, we actually in and I can't remember the year we actually changed uh, and started working with Lucid, uh, publisher of uh, a lot of male male romance uh, and erotica, and so they are actually all available with sadly different covers uh, at Lucid. Very nice covers, but. But 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 different. Um, those five are available. Um, they only as eBooks now. Um, so if people are interested in going out, 
it, it, it's it's at loose hyphen id id dot com, and uh, they're out there. You can search Lucid Romantics, and you will you will find them. The other two, uh, Hot Sauce and Email, um, the original publishers still re- retain the rights to it, and so they are uh, you, you know they're still uh, available as paperbacks uh, as we speak. Yeah, I saw those on Amazon. I didn't see these on Amazon when I went to look. So yeah, I'll have the to... search doesn't seem to be working quite, quite as well. But I do. If you if you go to my website scottpomfret.com, and there's a books page, there are links to each of them uh, on that page. Yeah, to the we'll link site. people up to those because these these are how we discovered you and Scott uh, back in the day, and and we love those. Well, we, we, I was glad glad to see and to see you guys doing this. I, I'm really interested that you you started the podcast and and it seems to be going wonderfully. So uh, I, I was curious myself. <laughs> Turn the tables for a second. What made you guys think about doing this? Um, for us, it was truly one day. It was like there's not a podcast that really sits in the gay romance genre. Um, and since we started it, we found a couple others. That are there's one called Rote that talks to a lot of, of gay authors, but also gay artists. They're like they're authors and painters and musicians and so forth. And then there's one called Romance Out Loud that also kind of deals in this space. Uh, and so we wanted to start something to talk about the books that we love, the books that we write um, as well. Um, and so we just kind of went for it. <laughs> Let's do this. Uh, and it's great because we get to talk to authors who whose books and work we love um, and try to help use the platform to to get authors work further out, you know, and and from our side, it's also getting our own work mentioned, you know, routinely, because what at the top of the show, we always got to talk about what we're doing with our writing right now. So it's yep. it's. It serves many purposes um, for us, and we, we have a great time doing it. Yeah, I mean, it's a wonderful vehicle, you know, to, as an author, and I've seen see you have authors with, with – you've had at least one author from my new uh, publisher, Nine Star Press, on before. And, you know, that's terrific, especially for a fledgling press, to be able to have a platform uh, that's sort of mutually beneficial for, for, for all of us. Yeah, and it's – I admit we're a little curated because uh, for these longer form interviews like this one, we do, we want to read the book. We want to embrace and love the book um, to have the person, you know, on and, you know, have the dialogue. Yep. Makes, makes sense. Um, so is there, is there more from Scott and Scott on the horizons going back to romantics a little bit? Sure. There is not from Scott and Scott as such. Um, my partner, Scott, has just launched his freelance career, uh, taking all his years in advertising and, uh, you know, strategy and communications and so on. And, um, you know, going to to turn that into a career. So he's spending a lot of his creative and writing energy um, doing that. He also has some some other writing projects uh, in mind. He has my, my favorite is his uh, he has a, an, an idea for a, a detective series with a sort of hot, dumb detective that manages to sleep his way to the solution every every uh, episode. So, uh, you know, he, he's got those going on. I have a bunch of projects that I'm continuing to work on. So, you know, we're, we're writing side by side, but not together anymore. Any tips for, for Will and I? Because we're, we're looking at starting to co-write uh, next year. Patience and be careful what you say about the other one's sex scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Get this big red mark in the in the in the in the uh, margin that says "not sexy," and then that a long discussion follows from that. <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> so overall, what's your process for writing? Are you are you someone who outlines, or do you just kind of see where it goes, or What's your routine? It's interesting. Before Romantics, I used to be sort of the, the free-floating, let the story take me where it goes sort of person, sort of writer. Um, Scott is m- way more outline-focused, and I've moved much closer to him than I used to be. I still tend to sort of steal snippets um, of, of or images that 
I love from whatever I happen to be reading, whether it's poetry or whatever, and you know, dump those into a big document that, that's filled with these things, which I revisit. Sometimes I use them as the inspiration for stories. Uh, sometimes I use them in, you know, within the outline once I'm actually starting to crank through and, and fill in the chapters. Um, so, so that's been a change for me. I, I will say it makes me much more productive, even though I have this sort of fleeting sense that I'm, you know, killing the muse along the way. Um, it is, it is a be- I think it's a better, more disciplined process, ultimately. Who are your author influences? So it kind of changes every, uh, every book. I mean, I, I'm constantly reading. I try to, um, you know, always have something on me at all times. Uh, no matter where I happen to be. And, um, you know, for example, recently I read uh, books by Garth Greenwell and Adam Hazlitt, both, both gay writers, young, gay, youngish gay writers, young in the case of Garth, youngish in the case of uh, Adam. And, uh, you know, I, I, I loved in, in each of their cases, they, they, they sort of were painting in miniature, very, very elegant, uh, very, very small scope um, books, their most recent books, and you know, not precisely for me. I like a little bit more scope, a little bit more uh, 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 breath over the years, etc. But but the 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 care and the attention to detail and to language was so beautiful, um, you know. And that's the kind of inspiration that that I take all the time as I'm as I'm you know writing whatever it is I'm writing. I I, I do obviously try to tie together what I'm writing with what I'm reading. So, so for example, you know, I read a lot of Irish poetry, mythology, etc. Well, well, history, obviously, while well, writing The Hunger Man, in part to get sort of what I think of as the rhythms of the land, um, the rhythms of the language. Um, but, um, you know, generally, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being influenced by Shakespeare all the time. I'm being influenced kind of what I'm currently, what's currently on my TBR pile. Nice. And you, you mentioned, obviously, that you're, you're writing. What, what is coming next? What do we have to look forward to? So I'm, I'm looking at a, at a couple of sequels. Um, we do need to get our, 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 our football players, or at least one of them, into the NFL. So uh, Brady and Peyton uh, will, will continue to go forward and face some more struggles. And I, I think uh, Peyton may, I mean, excuse me, Brady may see some... Um, uh, fallout from some of the war stories he describes uh, in uh, in the second half. So there, there's a, a, at least one, maybe two of those still to come. And I'm also working on a sequel to The Hunger Man, uh, in which he, uh, the main character, the the, the gay fairy character, uh, uh, goes to New Orleans in the uh, 1850s and up through the start of the Civil War. So again, it'll be a a gay historical, uh, you know, filled with New Orleans magic, coupled with Irish magic. So uh, I'm looking, really looking forward to writing that one. Nice. I, I have to say, of course, that I'm super excited about sequels to the second half. Because <laughs> I was hoping there was more more Brady and Peyton in there somewhere, uh, whether it be that they yep, just became yep. supporting characters somewhere or continued to be at the front and center of the, of the story. Yeah, and I think there there may be a uh, gay flag football league uh, backdrop to to one of these sequels. So so there's there's material. The boys have a lot of uh, development to do. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to that and to to you know having them come alive, uh, become a little more rich in, in each of these new settings. Awesome. So what's the best way for people to keep up with you online so they can find all this stuff when it comes out? Sure. I mean, my website is definitely the, the main place to go. It is scottpomfret.com, all one word. And uh, I'm also on Twitter at, at Boston Shanaki. So that's Boston, the city, and then S-E-A-N-A-C-H-I-E. And that word Shanaki is Irish for, for storyteller. Uh, so nice. uh, you can find, me, can find me there. Awesome. Well, Scott, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, this was great. Uh, it was absolutely a pleasure. So great to talk to you. And uh, please give my best to Will and hope you guys write up a storm. Um, you know, I appreciate this opportunity to, uh, to chat and hope to do it again. <laughs>